Released in February 2014 in Japan and March 2015 in North America, Story of Seasons is a farming simulation game. While technically not part of the Harvest Moon series due to Natsume's ownership of the Harvest Moon name, the game is still considered a part of the Bokujo Monogatari or Farm Story series in Japan. The game was developed and published in Japan by Marvelous AQL, who had been responsible for the previous games in the series, and for the North American release the game was published by Exceed Games. As of the time of this review there has been no information regarding a European release. In this game your character applies for a farming position in a small village called Oak Tree Town. Veronica, the mayor of said town will have you train under veteran farmer Eda for the first week which serves as a tutorial on how farm life works as well as the controls. In the process you will meet the other farmers who will serve as your rivals throughout the game and the inhabitants of the town whom you would interact with, befriend or potentially romance during the course of the game. Once you get your own shoddy house at the end of the week, your journey to making Oak Tree Town a successful place to live in will truly begin. So let's start the journey by looking at... The Good For starters the game is a time sink. Throughout the 100 plus hours I've invested into the game, I've always had something to do, and it's gone to the point where one day in-game has taken me nearly 40 minutes to get through. Whether you're growing crops, raising livestock, swimming in the rivers to collect fish, fishing off a wooden pier, socialising with the villagers and their three different lines, or selling your stock to the merchants who visit the town, the game offers a lot of activities to the players, whether they are veterans of the Harvest Moon games or newcomers. For the latter, the game even offers a seedling difficulty level, which halves the amount of stamina used whilst doing things in the game, as well as making some items cheaper. To add to the list of new stuff the game offers, there's still people that move into the town in the second year of the game, as well as new stock coming in well into the third year of the game. Not surprising if you're a veteran of the series, but still a good way to keep the player involved with what's going on in town. The farming system has been revised in my opinion for the better. As opposed to some of the earlier Harvest Moon games where a bag of seeds gave you a 3x3 square where each square had to be watered and harvested individually, Story of Seasons still have the 3x3 squares. However you water, fertilise and harvest all 9 squares at once. The economy of the game is balanced to reflect this, but the idea of dealing with 9 crops at a time is an absolute godsend in time management as opposed to 1 at a time. I'm also liking the crop variety in this game. And while there aren't mutations, which is what I like the most about Harvest Moon The Lost Valley, the type of crops available in Story of Seasons is a nice selection, including the Super Mario crops, which will enhance the crops and trees on your field or their produce. Also available are fields which favour a particular category of crops, but in the beginning a lot of them are occupied by your rival farmers, and in order for you to use them, you're going to have to compete against your fellow farmers for ownership of the fields, whether it's in a contest or based off how much you ship. I was also quite fond of the customization options in the game. As well as your appearance, you can also edit the clothes and accessories your character wears, as well as the stuff you can put in your house, on your farm, and as the game progresses in the town. There are certain combinations of items or accessories that can benefit you in different ways, such as an accessory set that can slowly restore your stamina over time, or reduce the amount of stamina used when using tools. This introduces players with a way to customize their town and characters the way they want, and it's a nice follow up on the customization features introduced in Harvest Moon A New Beginning. As much as I can praise the game, it isn't without its faults, so from here we're going to go into... The Bad. The first issue I had with this game is that the only way to make money from your crops, materials or items was to sell them to a travelling trader. The problem here is that early on in the game you only have one to trade with and she's not always readily available. So unless you manage your money very well, you'll find times where you can barely afford anything and you have to hold out for when she happens to be in town. Thankfully this problem does get rectified later on, as after you've sold enough goods to her, you unlock more vendors, and the more vendors available, the more frequently you can sell your goods and make a profit. Later on you can even set up your own stall if visiting them is inconvenient. There are two traders that do require special requirements to unlock so I do highly suggest selling a variety of goods to unlock them as soon as possible. Now remember how I talked about save scumming in my review for the Lost Valley? Well it makes a return in this game. At a later point in the game you'll gain access to the Safari. This is the one place in the game where you can mine for ore, and while that's good and all, the problem here is that it's all completely random. 
you can get anywhere between 4 to 10 items, and if you're lucky you'll get a lot of valuable ores or gems that you can sell for a lot of cash, otherwise you could sometimes just get rocks, scrap ore and glass stones. For more complex blueprints to build things later on in the game, they either require to have specific resources or a lot of money prior to purchasing. And so for a lot of fall and winter, I found myself safe scumming the one mining point so I could collect valuable ores and gems to make money or in another case to upgrade my house. When the upgrades for the safari become available to build, they can take up to 500 plus pieces of lumber or stone, depending on the upgrade. And that makes farming, pun intended, for those materials more of a thorn in the side than something enjoyable. Save scumming isn't just restricted to mining and foraging points. The fishing festival is a very notorious festival to win without it as well. I've been beaten by someone who had caught an ungodly amount of fish, or a fish two to three times bigger than my biggest fish. The festival also puts you at a huge disadvantage as you need to find an empty pier to start fishing on. And seeing as you only have four in-game hours to catch as many fish as you can, or the biggest fish possible, there's only three piers. Two of them are just outside of town, and one is all the way on the other end of the map by your house. Out of those three piers, two of them are always going to be occupied. Unfortunately, it's all completely random. So if it happens to be the one pier that's over by your house, it takes you approximately 30 minutes in-game to go there. So by that time, it seriously hinders your chances of winning. However, to counterbalance that, you can throw bait in all the fishing spots prior to the contest to give yourself a better chance since the bait lasts all day, and you can't access your inventory during the contest. Some of the characters I've found didn't really serve a huge purpose in the game. I'm looking at you nature sprites. In previous game, the nature sprites, see also harvest sprites, would help your farmer maintain the farm by doing jobs for you, such as watering your crops, or looking after your animals. But as far as I'm aware of, from what I've played in this game, they don't seem to offer any services like that. Matter of fact, once you meet them, which is when the other fields are unlocked, they remain absent until Desi, this game's Harvest Goddess, or well, Harvest Goddess in training, shows up during year two. And from that point on, they more or less wander the mountains. For the most part, the sprites will generally act as caregivers for Desi as she trains to become a Harvest Goddess, but aside from that, they don't really serve any other purpose in the game, aside from getting in the way of people who happen to be wandering around the mountain. And I think with that, I've covered everything I want to talk about here, so why don't we move along and discuss The Ugly, where I talk about graphics, music, general presentation, and technical aspects of the game. Graphically, I would actually say I prefer the character models of Harvest Moon The Lost Valley over Story of Seasons, mainly as because the former use those character models for dialogue sequences. In regards to unique and colourful characters, Story of Seasons has that absolutely nailed. The music is very chill and relaxing, and really captures and complements the season's atmosphere, as well as making you feel right at home in Oak Tree Town and its surroundings. The game feels really polished, and aside from the odd time characters are running into one another, I had no issues or bugs during my playthrough, which leaves me with my final thoughts on the game. Overall, Story of Seasons, while not officially a Harvest Moon game, certainly lives up to its legacy. And while unfortunately it doesn't dethrone Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town on the Game Boy Advance, or Harvest Moon GBC3 on the Game Boy Color, it certainly ranks quite high up there, and I feel that the game is a good success for Harvest Moon A New Beginning. The game will easily destroy your free time, as well as keep you entertained with new content and events happening throughout the game. It has a colourful cast of characters that you'll grow to like and know better as your journey in the game progresses, and it's a game I would definitely recommend. Now, if Farming Simulator happens to be too realistic for you, and if The Lost Valley didn't scratch the itch for a Harvest Moon game, I think this game will definitely sort you out. And now for the rating. Overall, I would give Story of Seasons the Super Mario Crops out of 10. The game may start a bit slow, but if you spend the time, it will reward you for the hard work you've done by making the experience better. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review.